Good time of day, guys! My name is Godzi, and welcome back to another episode of Higurashi When They Cry, Chapter 3, Tatari Garoshi. Last episode, uh, Keiichi woke up in the morning, but then he was like, no, wait, it's still night. And because, like, everyone's just like, yeah, things that you thought happened didn't happen because we saw you at the festival, and yada, 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 yada. So, things are going kind of fucking wild. And now we've got Iria here, uh, actually wearing his freaking lab coat and stuff. I, I don't think he has that all yet, this chapter. So, yeah, but regardless, before we get into this episode, we've got some stuff uh, for spoiler time, uh, where we're going to talk about the original anime first, and then the new anime, and I'll say when we switch to the new one. So, yeah, uh, we're going into spoiler time, mute or forever hold your peace. When I pull the menu down, you can unmute. So, I've got a comment, uh, so first things first, we'll just read it, so let's start. Uh, so the climax of this chapter is actually one of the very few instances in Higurashi where we are never given a direct answer. However, with the information you collect throughout the answer arcs, it becomes fairly clear. I won't go into it on this episode's comments because there are still questions to raise, but I will say that while a good guess your name redacted, Theory is probably wrong, and there is a way to explain it without anything supernatural. You are correct about the footsteps, though. So, name redacted, obviously, Hanyu. Uh, so, I suppose that means Hanyu transforming is wrong, and then they go on to say... Uh, they talk about anime spoilers for Matsuri Bayashi. They say, anime spoilers, your theory is disproven by Matsuri Bayashi. If Hanyu could transform, she would have hidden her horns. And furthermore, she didn't introduce herself as a piece until that arc. It was kind of the point of Mina Garoshi in terms of the overarching story. Good. Uh, well, not good. Good to know, but... <laughs> uh, in that case, then, I thought of a different possibility as for why uh, everyone's just like, Yeah, Keiichi, we saw you at the festival and stuff like that. I'm guessing instead, and I could be wrong here, too... Uh, it's more that Mion and Rena put the pieces together, because I guess maybe they already know Satoshi killed his aunt. They were just like, yeah, these parallels, it's like, yeah, he's probably gonna try and kill Tepe, isn't he? So, yeah, we're just gonna give him an alibi, because what are friends good, what are friends for? I remember in, uh, I'm assuming Sumi Horoboshi, uh, Rena kills Pinky. At some point during that, in the junkyard, and then she's just like, Hey, friends, will you help me hide his body? And they're just like, what are friends for, if not hiding dead bodies that our friends kill? And then, yeah, they just fucking help her out, and... Yeah, so I guess it's kind of an instance of that, except without Keiichi being like, Hey, you guys want to help me? They're just like, yeah, we're just gonna help him. Because, otherwise, uh, if the body gets found, they're just gonna be like, well, yeah, the Keiichi Mayabara man wasn't at the festival, so if they lie about him being at the festival, they're, that's like giving him an alibi and stuff like that. So it's kind of similar to what I was saying with, like, Rika and Hanyu giving him an alibi, but instead it's uh, more Rena and Mion's plan. So, yeah. <clears throat> As for Satoko being like, yeah, he's still alive, that's probably her form of Hinamizawa syndrome. Like, even though he's dead, maybe she's deluding him into existence in her own perception. So it's like, he's still there to her, but he's still dead to everyone else. That's really the only possible explanation I can think of. There could be something different, but that's what I'm guessing, if not Hanyu transforming into Keiichi. So, guess that means Hanyu can't transform. Uh, so that's good to remember. Uh, the footsteps thing being right, though, yeah, I was just kind of... Comparing that with Watanagashi, kid jumping on the floorboards, how I was basically straight up told, yeah, that was Hanyu, and I was like, oh yeah, that's right, I forgot she was kind of a thing, and she was supposed to be Oyashiro, so it makes sense, so, yeah. Now we're moving into spoilers for uh, Higurashi Go, so leave now if you don't want spoilers for that, or mute, so, yeah, uh, starting now. So, Go spoilers plus minor anime spoilers. I don't think the Mina Garoshi part will last. Since we started with Tatari Garoshi, Keiichi is missing several connections he had in Mina Garoshi that allowed him to persist. 
He was friendly with the village people, made friends with kamada -kun, which he did in Tatari Garoshi, but not Tatari Damashi, and most importantly, was on good terms with Oishi. We are most likely taking a sharp turn into a new tragedy. That makes sense. I do remember last episode ended with a shot of Oishi walking. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, this could actually be interesting, something that I just thought of. Oishi has Hinamizawa Syndrome. What, how the fuck would he interact with that? Maybe it's not possible for him to get it because of things that I'm possibly forgetting. But it's like, the only characters who have ever really had Hinamizawa Syndrome and committed crimes... Or just did shit, like, to fuck up everything. Keiichi, Rena, Shion, Satoko, and now Mion after uh, Wata Damashi. So it'd be interesting, like, what would happen if uh, Oishi had it? Uh, well, Tomatake also has it at a point, too, and he's not from Hinamizawa, I guess. So it, it, should, it should still be possible for Oishi to get it, right? So... Yeah, I suppose that could be something that happens. Uh, if not him, then I would guess either Shion or Rena is going to do something. Because they both had several uh, instances in the last episode where they were, you know, just not happy. Like, very displeased, but then they did nothing. Like, obviously Shion hit Keiichi with a chair, but that's about the extent of that. Uh, there was a shot of Rena, like gritting her teeth and more or less trying to dig a hole through the table she was sitting at uh, when they were at the Child Protective Services Agency or whatever. Um, I don't think Keiichi, Mion, or Rika are going to do anything. Uh, Satoko might do something, but I don't know. I imagine, though, if since Tatari Damashi is supposed to be five episodes, next episode we're going to see probably the climax of the tragedy. Maybe Shion or Rena is going to try and kill Oishi or something like that. I don't fucking know. I, I feel like Oishi's going to have to have something to do with it. Something. But maybe not being absolutely central. I feel like he's going to somehow incite what happens. Whether or not he has Hinamizawa Syndrome. Whether or not he kills anyone or gets killed or stays alive or does nothing. I feel like it's going to somehow be spurred by him. So... Yeah, and then the episode after, I feel like we're gonna get some new supernatural twist or something that's just gonna be like, whoa, Satoko is in on, is in the time loop too, which is like, yeah, everyone was theorizing that. <laughs> but granted, I might have not even thought of that if it weren't for uh, reading uh, other theories. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't freaking know. Uh, what I would have thought. I think I probably would have been more suspicious of Keiichi by this point. Because I still think there could be something more happening with Keiichi. I'm not sure what it would be. But there's been a couple lines. Maybe I'm just thinking too much. But there's been a couple lines where Keiichi says things that are like, Yeah, if you take this in a context of him being in the time loop, it could mean he's in the time loop. <laughs> but <laughs> that's about all I can really think of, so... Yeah, with that being said, we're going to leave spoiler time, but I still have one more thing to say. So, before we get into the rest of this, there's a little bit more that I want to say. Uh, from the comment I got last episode, which says, Probably about three episodes left, if I recall correctly, and I'm guessing right. Maybe do one more episode, then binge the rest. So, uh, I think that probably means... There will be a good stopping point about an hour from now, and then there will probably be enough content to annihilate the rest of the chapter next episode. The only potential problem with that is that next episode I'm going to be recording on a Thursday. Uh, at least assuming... Well, either way, next episode I'm going to be recording um, when the new episode comes out. So, I don't know if I'll be able to knock out the rest of it next episode, but... If I can, then I will, but if I get too tired, I'll probably stop and just call it an episode there, because depending on what happens next episode of Go, I'll prob I'll either have, like, so little to talk about or so much to talk about, because it's, like, it's not necessar necessarily true that new episodes imply I have a lot to talk about, because, I like, the last episode that aired, I've talked about this episode 
uh, a little bit across two episodes now. But then, like, Watadamashi, the last episode of that, I had, like, nothing to say about that at first, I, if I re remember correctly. But then the episode after that, I was just like, well, I'm going to talk about it for 30 minutes or something. So, yeah, but that's about when I came up with my larger theory anyway, so... Yeah, uh, either way, this episode will probably be about an hour, ten minutes after this discussion, so... Yeah, um... I, I got nothing else to say, let's just read. <laughs> Hello, this is the first time we've seen each other here. Coach! Coach, you... you were a doctor? <laughs> now that you mention it, he did seem to know his way around when he was looking at my shoulder in the nurse's office. It would make sense if he was actually a doctor. Come to think of it, our teacher called him Irie-sensei, didn't she? Well, yes. I'm more or less a doctor here. The doctors have it really good, you know? You get to see and touch all that young, silky smooth skin. I could steal their agency with a suspicious injection and have them be my personal maids. Thank you very much. <laughs> Seeing that made my cold go away. I'll be leaving now. Polite bow. <laughs> you verbalize that? Okay, dude. Whoa, wait, wait. My Ibarra san! A joke. It was a joke. Come, come. Sit down and let me take a look at you. I'll need to use my stethoscope. So show me your silky smooth chest, my Ibarra san. <laughs> For some reason, I felt really relieved. After that insane night, as much as I thought everything had gone crazy, Coach was here doing the same thing he always did. I was very happy for that. Hmm, you don't seem to have a cold. Actually, those scrapes and cuts all over you seem to be the painful thing. Don't tell me you were playing in the bushes with short sleeves and shorts. I mean, I can't say for sure you haven't been infected with te tetanus. As I was chasing that man last night, I'd kept being scraped by bits of trees. I didn't realize I had so many cuts. You went a little too crazy at the festival yesterday. Enjoy that while you're young. And once again, I apparently went to the festival. <laughs> Coach, did you go too? To the festival? Yes, of course I did. I may be a doctor, but I'm also on the Watanagashi Executive Committee. Did you see me there? This coach was the same coach that I'd always known, and I felt like I could trust him more than my weird friends, so I asked. <clears throat> well, actually, I was drinking in the main tent with the chairman and the others the whole time. I didn't go out to see the festival at all. I don't think I saw you. Oh. That was a strange question. Perhaps you didn't sleep well last night? You can't do that. You have to sleep and eat well to grow up fine. Coach let out a laugh. He didn't laugh in an unnatural way, like Mion and Rena did. Coach was okay. He was the coach from the world I knew. He wasn't someone from this abnormal world. Uh, well, this all might seem a little weird to you, but I want you to hear me out without laughing. Yes, go ahead. I greatly welcome any shy, bashful worries you might have as you come into puberty. Could it be possible that I have an identical twin? Bruh. <laughs> Coach hadn't expected that question at all and couldn't say anything for a moment. But then, he smiled calmly and quietly answered. This is just superstition, but I've heard before that everyone has two other people in the world who look just like them. If there was, I'd certainly like to meet him, though. T also, there are plenty of fairy tales where a person's double appears. The German ones about doppelgangers are probably the most famous. Doppelgangers? Yes, they look exactly like another person. Apparently, they herald misfortune, and if you meet one, you're sure to die soon. Hey, I think that's how it went. When you meet them, you're sure to die soon. Peaceful music plus the freaky sound effects. Oh, the music faded out. Got it. The story ended directly in death, plain and simple, and it made my spine tingle. Coach wasn't saying it to scare me, though. He was just offering a casual anecdote, but that made it feel all the more real. <coughs> Have you ever heard of one of those things showing up in Hinamizawa? What? <laughs> well, I can't say that I have. 
Coach must have thought he was being teased, so he laughed in an exaggerated way. But when I didn't smile along with him, his laughter steadily grew fainter. I'm sorry, well, I was sort of being serious. Uh, no, I apologize for laughing. Was there something you were worried about? I wondered if I should tell him. Then, after resolving myself one final time, I slowly spoke. I... I didn't go to the festival yesterday. Is that right? Well, there will be one next year. And then you can... That's not what I meant! I didn't go to the festival. But according to everyone else, I was there. Could that even be possible? After blinking his eyes in amazement, Coach thought seriously about what I was trying to say. And he answered, choosing his words carefully. Let me make sure I have this straight. My Barakun, you went to the Watanagashi Festival but don't remember it. Am I right? I was trying to say something completely different, but I suppose any sane person would come to that conclusion. That night, Keiichi Maibara was actually at the festival, but I was saying I didn't go. That obviously meant my memories of going there had failed me. But that was absolutely impossible. That vivid act I had committed during the downpour couldn't possibly have been an illusion. All these scrapes on my body prove it, as does the fact that the bat wasn't in the locker. <clears throat> no. That's not it, coach. I really didn't go to the festival. Please don't take offense, my Barasan. Have you ever had an experience where you were suddenly somewhere unfamiliar and you couldn't remember why? And now, and I didn't lose my memories or anything. Because while the festival was going on, I was definitely doing something else. It wasn't like I was asleep and unconscious or anything. <clears throat> You're certain you were doing something else? I know I'm being awfully rude, but are you sure you're not mistaken? I know I'm not. My memories are clear as day, and they were real. During the festival, you weren't at the shrine, and you were doing something somewhere else. Can you definitely prove that? Um... That's right. Thinking it through brought me to this. There was only one way to prove that I really wasn't at the festival yesterday. And that was to show that there was no doubt I had killed her uncle. Coach saw me struggling to answer, and his eyes looked a little cold. I guess they would. <clears throat> After all, from Coach's perspective, I was just a weirdo sputtering nonsense. Would you like to lay down? Maybe you should relax and take it easy for a bit. Sorry, I didn't really come here to lay down. You seem to be a little worked up. Why don't I give you a sedative that'll let you sleep for a bit? That way... I'm NOT BEING STRANGE! I realized Coach was treating me like a deviant, so I raised my voice. I apologize if I've offended you. So please, calm down. I definitely didn't go to the festival! That's the truth! I understand. I understand, so please, calm down, take a deep breath. No, you don't understand at all! Coach was stunned and stared in stupefaction. Stu what the fuck is that word? Stupefaction. Okay. I mean, stupefied, I guess, but st st I thought it was stupefiction. Is that just a typo? Nah, whatever. I do understand, Mayabara-san. You didn't go to the festival yesterday. Is that right? I believe you. I believe you. Coach jotted down a brief note in his records. He was writing it in German so that his patient wouldn't know what it said. But I can make a good guess as to what he wrote. Man knows German? Okay. <clears throat> you won't believe me until I tell you everything I was doing at the time, will you? No, I believe you. Please, sit down. Before I sat, I tilted my head back a little. The blood in my face all drained out, and I quieted down. After taking a deep breath, I made sure that I was calm now. It would have been impossible for me to be at the festival, because at the time I was... Should I tell him, or not? I really didn't want to go on living like this, feeling this horrible. And I said them, the final fatal words, because I was... Killing Satoko's uncle at the time. I could smell the concrete in the room. I could feel the air around us sharpen. Nobody moved. Only the sound of the clock ticking told us time hadn't stopped. 
With his mouth wide open, Coach even forgot to blink for a little while. <clears throat> you killed Santako-chan's uncle? Yeah. It's fine now, Keiichi Mayabara. Don't hesitate. Admit it with all your strength. Yes. Last night, I did it. I killed him. I spoke clearly and fluidly. I could easily tell that Coach's mind had gone completely blank. Why would you... No! That was a foolish question. I believed it was the most direct method of saving Satoko, so I carried it out. I don't have any regrets. I... I see. <laughs> Coach smiled thinly and nodded a bit. So I couldn't have been at the festival. I left the brightness of my house for the darkness of the outside. After that, I dug holes, made phone calls. I had my hands full. And then I attacked him, killed him, and buried him. It was pouring hard at the time. The festival started that evening, but was suspended due to the rain. There were no gaps in my memories. From the late afternoon until it started to rain, there was no time for me to have possibly gone to the festival. And those wounds? Are they from that? Yes. There's a road through the forest near Satoko's house. I attacked him there. He ran, but I chased him, and finally killed him near the road that leads to town. Is that true? Killing her uncle, it wasn't some wild fantasy? I could tell that coach didn't believe me, so I spoke slowly, not letting myself grow excited. It's true. I killed him with Satoshi's bat. I threw it and the uncle's motorbike into the swamp. I dug a hole, killed him, and buried him. I did it all by myself. Satoko-chan's uncle drove past you on a motorbike, did he? Then you predicted he'd do that and just waited? I assumed he wouldn't be leaving his house that day, so I lied to him over the phone to get him out. You called him? But your house is so far away from Satoko-chan's. I wouldn't think you'd be able to make it there so soon after calling him. I used the phone closer to where I was going to attack him, the one at school. But my abara san it was Sunday. Wouldn't the school have been locked up? A forest ranger happened to go inside for a bit. I swept in when I had the chance. After that, Coach grilled me on a few different things regarding the incident. He made sure to question me carefully, looking for any contradictions in my account. I'll believe you. What you did yesterday it doesn't seem like a dream. I explained everything, including minor details that only someone who had actually committed the act could explain. I could, if, of course. It was only yesterday. Coach realized that my story had no expedient coincidences or too convenient details that would have existed in a daydream or delusion, and finally seemed to want to believe me. I mean, to be fair, the forest ranger is probably the biggest coincidence, but that's about it. So, do you still think I went to the festival and lost my memory? Coach slowly shook his head. But everyone in class... They said I was at the festival yesterday. Is that even possible? No, it's not. Your classmates probably mistook you for someone who looked very similar. Then, given how group psychology works, everyone just assumed that you had been at the festival. They couldn't have mistaken me. Mion and all the rest said they were spending time with Keiichi Mayabara. It was much more than just having some having mistaken someone else for me. But saying that out loud would just confuse Coach. He spoke to me in whispered tones. <clears throat> Do you feel guilty at all? It didn't sound like he was criticizing me. And even if he had, I would have flatly said the same thing. I don't. I did it so that I could return the peaceful days that he'd stolen from us. So I plan to forget all about having killed him and live my life as usual. Once Satoko's regular smile returns, the one from before he showed up, everything will finally be over. Any chance that someone witnessed the crime? I don't think so. If someone had seen me, I would have been arrested already. I am a doctor. My job is to save lives. So I cannot make any statements to the effect of condoning the taking of another's life. So instead, I will say this. Nope. Coach slowly rose and placed a hand on my shoulder. For saving Satoko-chan, I thank you. 
Coach's eyes started shedding warm tears. When I looked at him, I started to feel some tears of my own. <laughs> I didn't know what I was crying for. And so, for a little while, the two men in the room fought back their tears. But it's strange. What is... I'm sure I killed him. And yet, he's, he seems to have returned home alive. Coach's expression immediately sharpened. <laughs> Depending on the situation, there are many ways that mere unconsciousness can look like real death to a layperson. Do you think it's possible he was just knocked out? I didn't check for a pulse, but I'm pretty sure I did him in. Can I ask you to reproduce the situation in which you attacked him, Mayabara-san? Coach wrote up a health and fitness week poster nearby and offered it to me to represent the bat. <clears throat> Though I may have been lost to the emotions of a beast that night, I remembered in detail the number of times I swung the bat, the angles I had swung from, and the force I had applied. Using Coach as a stand-in for the uncle, I reproduced them over, one by one. Wait, he, like, he was just standing there as a dummy? Like, or are you, like, fake hitting him? Like, and when he tripped and fell, I bashed him in the top of the head, like this. When I did, it felt different from the other strikes. I thought I cracked his skull. Coach was calmly analyzing the information, using the places I'd struck in the situation at hand to find out what state the uncle's body had been in. I wasn't totally sure he was dead, so I hit him a few more times after he fell. Did he react at all? At first, I sort of felt his body jolting with every hit, but eventually that stopped too, and he didn't react at all. Coach folded his arms and said, hmm, a few times, and then he spoke. He's dead. There's not much doubt about it. He didn't just look like he was? I can't say very much from just your story, Mayabara-san, but I think it's almost certain. Besides, you buried the corpse in the mud, and that took you quite a bit of time, right? Let's say it took you 30 minutes. That would mean he was buried under the muddy water for those 30 minutes. If you don't breathe for that long, your brain will die no matter what. You mean, even ignoring how hard I hit him, he would definitely have died while I was burying him? That's right. It's impossible to stay alive buried underground for 30 minutes. Impossible. You're right. But, Sadako, she says he's alive! Coach, a doctor, just gave his stamp of approval that he was dead for sure. That made it seem all the more unfair that he could still be among the living. Mayavara-san, this is a really horrible idea, but is it possible that the person you killed wasn't actually her uncle? Huh? He's right. That could be why. It cleared up the inconsistency of my definitely having killed someone, but him still being alive. There's no way! I mean, we were both at Satsuko's house when she was bringing his alcohol inside. There was a man who stuck his face out the window to look. It was him, right? That was Satsuko's uncle, right? Okay, he's gonna say that was one of his buddies. Yes, you're not wrong. It was that man. Could she have had more than one uncle or something? No one that I've ever heard of. It's just him. Could you tell me what he looked like? Well, his height first. He was about 175 centimeters. Maybe a little taller. How much is that? Like, about six feet? In order to eliminate the worst possibility that I'd killed someone else, Coach began to thoroughly compare what the man in his mind looked like with what I told him the person I killed looked like. But, no matter how in-depth my description went, none of the characteristics differed. The uncle's traits, according to Coach, were all exactly the same as the person I'd killed. But those traits were all extremely vague, and they weren't particularly distinct at a glance. Could you... well, is there anything else about him that would let us identify him for sure? Now that you mention it, I've never seen it, but... I believe Satoko-chan once said a long time ago that he had a tattoo of a tiger or something on his back. A tattoo? That was really important. Not everyone had a tattoo. 
If I found a tattoo tiger on the back of the man's corpse, it would be proof I'd killed the right one. Why not just go to her house and save the trouble, dude? Like, at the moment, though, there was one other thing that would verify this. T Thank you! Holy shit! <laughs> Damn. To go to Sadako's house and see for myself the uncle that had returned home despite having died. But that was far more terrifying than digging up the body and looking at its back. Without even looking at the tattoo, I knew for sure the one I'd killed had been Satoko's uncle. I cracked his head open and killed him. And yet, he'd gone back home. There wasn't any misunderstanding, or even the shadow of a doubt in my mind about having killed him. And yet, it was impossible for him to exist. Kind of like how Keiichi Mayabara had been at the festival, despite it being impossible. That small commonality made me feel as though a faint but bizarre force was permeating this insane Hinamizawa. I wonder, what on earth could have happened? Despite you not going to the festival and killing Satoko-chan's uncle, you were at the festival, and the uncle you killed is alive. None of this makes any sense. When I look at anything, everything that way, it's almost like I'm just having a nightmare, and there's no killer at all. But it's the truth! The sensation as I used my own hands and that bat to bash him again and again! That was no illusion or dream! Coach let out a slow sigh, then after looking at the clock, got up. Let's go over this all a little more seriously. If you'll excuse me, I'll go put on some tea. A clinic's about to close, after all. I need to let the other employees leave. Coach stood up and went out into the hallway, leaving me alone. The clock was about to strike six. I was at the festival, and the uncle I'd killed was alive. Had I really committed murder yesterday? The only whisper of a fact that proved it happened was the absence of that bat from Satoshi's locker. In any case, I was glad that Coach had taken my nonsense seriously. I just confessed to murder. Normally that would frighten a person away, but Coach didn't run. He cried with me. I was glad he did. Like so, my tension smoothly melted away, and I suddenly realized I really had to urinate. Just say pee, dude, like... I thought to use the restroom while Coach had stepped out. There was one across from the waiting room. As soon as I left the room, I saw Coach and two male doctors wearing white clothing standing in the shadows of the hallway nearby. I didn't particularly intend to eavesdrop or anything, but I was quite surprised upon noticing how uneasy they seemed. I hid behind the wall and quietly listened in. <clears throat> it seemed like Coach was giving directions to the two doctors. Black tea? I'll make some. Mix in the sedative you think best for the occasion. Oh no! Not this song again! Honk honk! Uh oh! <laughs> Cover the taste with milk and sugar. He may grow suspicious at the sudden onset of drowsiness. It's possibly he may get agitated and become violent. We will handle that. How many male staff are still here? One mountain dog, including us three. What? What was all this? I think I was already agitated, despite what Coach said. What was it? Was it just a, a just casual conversation? And it was only sounding unbelievable to me? Possibly? Coach said he would bring some black tea and leave the room. And then, in the shadows, he was telling his subordinates to put some kind of sleeping powder in the tea? Plus, they were getting extra help, in case I thought the sudden sweepiness was suspicious and started getting violent. <laughs> I can't take this song seriously! I'm sorry, what is this fucking song? Seriously. Like... <laughs> hey, wait, Keiichi Mayabara! Calm down, calm down- I- no, I can't take this fucking song seriously. I'm taking off my headphones. I can kind of hear it through my headphones while they're just around my neck, but I should stop laughing at least, so, yeah. There's no way something this stupid could be happening. I mean, he was genuinely listening to my story, and he even cried with me. I thought, I thought he was the one person in Hinamizawa who would understand. This, this was... No, this was... There are signs of fabrications or falsehoods, and his memories of yesterday in particular are completely confused. He can no longer tell truth from falsehood. 
It's quite similar to multiple personality disorder. But as for how quickly this mental disorder emerged, it's just not normal. Maybe it's inborn, or perhaps there were signs of it before he moved here. Hmm. <laughs> I like that hint. I'd like to take a look at any records of him staying at a mental hospital before he moved here. In any case, I want him to take a quiet nap. The two doctors nodded deeply. I should probably contact my Abarakun's parents, too. Though I can't think of what to tell them. Please find his home phone number for me. My eyes, still moist, began to shed tears once more. This was... too cruel! I really thought he had actually understood, and had believed what I told him! But now, from the other side of that wall, he was bluntly treating me like a crazy person! A crazy person who chomps ice and listens to honk honk music! He believed you. He believed you! I had let down my guard, because I thought you were the only ally I had left after that insane night. Was that a lie? All that, about thanking me on Satsuko's behalf, were you just pretending in order to keep me placated? Ugh. My tears fell to the four, 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 yeah, four, in frustration. I was an idiot. I was an idiot. I was such an idiot for believing that bastard. I heard footsteps approaching the doctors. A man in a dress shirt with no tie came running up. Bureau staff. Dr. Irie! It's terrible! They, they found Takano-san! Takano-san? Oh, wait, where? Well, apparently they discovered her burned corpse in the mountains in Gifu. She's dead? Takano-san? The men, all surprised, exchanged glances. Dead? Takano-san? Hey, wait. So then, does that mean when I cursed her, wishing for her death, that wish was granted? What do you mean, burned corpse? Was it an accident? According to the statement from the Prefectural Police Department, the possibility is extremely high that she was murdered. <laughs> As I cried, I laughed quietly. Serves you right. Serves you right! If I hadn't run into that woman, my murder would have been perfect. But she just had to come driving up to me, and tried to coerce me like that. I regretted not having killed her on the spot, but now she was dead anyway. My curse, my wish for her demise, it was fulfilled. Serves you right. Serves you right. Risa-san died, and Takano-san died. Who's Risa? What on earth could be happening in Hinamizawa? Don't tell me that this was all Oyashiro-sama's curse for this year. Like how I'll let the curse be real, Coach said. Everyone present just nodded as Coach, Coach cursed at no one in particular. <laughs> yes, maybe it wasn't Oyashiro-sama, but this was definitely a spell. A curse! I wished for her to die, so she did. If this wasn't just a coincidence, and she died because I wished for it, then you'll die next, Coach! You betrayed me. You pretended to believe me, but deep down you thought I was a madman. You looked down on me with all that pity in your eyes. For now, get the black tea ready. I'll bring it inside. I don't think he'd let anyone besides me be alone with him. Shit, shit, shit! What do I do? What do I do, Keiichi Mayabara? This time I heard the voice of a nurse. Dr. Avery, eh? Oh, there you are. You have a phone call. I'm a little busy at the moment, so please tell them I'll call back. But who is it from? A Mr. Oishi from the Okonomiya Police Department. Oh, sheesh. What the bad timing. Alright, I'll answer it. Hmm. Coach left to go answer the phone. The other men headed towards the room with the teapot to make the black tea, like Coach had ordered them to. Fortunately, Coach having to take that phone call meant there would be extra time for me to act. I had to decide what to do now. Would I let him make me drink the sedative-infused tea? be held down and thrown into a mental hospital. Nothing would come from starting a brawl here. They had more people anyway, and they were all bigger than me. If it came to a fight, I didn't stand a chance in hell. If I couldn't win against them, then there was only one thing left to do. Run. Adrenaline suddenly rushed into my brain and my body, 
started to move with keen instinct, like it had on that night. My surface temperature quickly cooled, and the transmission routes between my cells enlarged. Using 360 degree visual information, I searched for an escape route. The man's going Takuji mode again. Let's go. <laughs> I would open the window behind me. Outside was a parking lot. There were no cars. A little beyond there was the bicycle I had taken to get here. I determined that this would be the quickest method of escape. I approached the window swiftly, but with little sound, to raise as little suspicion as I could. With the speed and silence of a shadow, like I'd had on that night I chased her uncle, I unlocked the window and opened it up. A cool evening breeze wafted in. I stuck my head out and looked over the parking lot again. Nobody in sight. No need to hesitate. I quietly crawled outside and closed the window behind me. I held my breath and listened carefully. Nobody seemed to have realized I'd, to have realized I'd run. I looked around. Then I jumped onto my bicycle and zoomed away. The pedals clattered under the force. Had my bike always creaked like this? Did the pedals always whine every time I pushed down on them? My bike wasn't the only one crying though. My tears fell as the wind cut through them. They rode the breeze and scattered behind me. Ah! I hate this. I hate this! I'm not the crazy one! Hinamizawa is! How, how dare you treat me like a madman! Die! Die! Just fucking die already! I believed you! I believed you! I, I can't scream right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd gone to the hospital in order to escape Rena and Mion's invitation, but the reality that was waiting for me had been too cruel. Who was insane? Me or Hinamizawa? I think the music's probably over, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Or was the answer something else? I started having trouble breathing. I didn't have any clue what was happening anymore. The loud chirps of the Higurashi were irritating me. <sighs> Or even the Hinanizawa Higurashi I knew so well, calling into the wind. No, that wasn't quite it. They weren't calling, they were crying. The pained, wa the pained wailing of those lost in some kind of rhythm in another world, no longer able to return to their own sunlight. I didn't do all that to end up in a world like that. And actually, at about this time, I might have been having fun with everyone else. Satoko would have gotten her smile back after realizing her uncle would never come home, and she might have shown it to us at her first club meeting in a while. That was the kind of world I wished for. So, what was this? Why did I end up in such a strange, ghastly world? Someone I'd killed was living like normal, and I had enjoyed myself at the festival despite not being there. I don't want it. I don't want this strange world! When did it start to go wrong? When? When? No matter how much I thought about it, I never understood. I rode swiftly and returned to my home. It had begun to rain during my journey back, and just like yesterday, I was now soaked. But I didn't care about something so trivial right now. The pain I felt in my heart in that coach, the one person I trusted, was acting so cruelly was far worse. Did I have no allies in Hinamizawa anymore? With the naive thought that I at least wanted my parents to side with me, I stepped up to the front door. Wait, Keiichi. It'll be dark soon. There's something you want to check, right? Yes. I wanted to dig up the man's corpse and get a look at his back. If there was a tiger tattoo there, I would know beyond a doubt he was Satoko's uncle. That long night wouldn't end until I was certain. If this insane world was all reparation, all a divine punishment, then I needed to make certain whether I had been successful enough to even deserve to pay that price. I went to the storage room again and got the shovel. It had been washed in the rain, but the paint was peeling, making it look unsightly. I never ever wanted to touch this thing again. The sensation of it in my hands was totally different from the night before. There was a ruthless coldness about it. Why are you actually going to dig up the body? Go to Sadako's house, you dumbass. Yeah. It'd be dark soon, so I need the lantern, too. There'd be a little bit of light from the streetlights, but it would get extremely dark. Ugh. I thought I'd put the lantern here, but I suddenly noticed it wasn't anywhere to be found. Then it hit me like a bolt of lightning. 
course. On that night, I hadn't brought the lantern back with me. I'd left it at the place I'd buried the body. If I didn't go to get it soon, it would get very dark. And then, not only would I be unable to find the spot I'd buried the corpse, but I wouldn't even be able to find the lantern itself. If that happened, it was all over. I need to hurry! In order to fit the shovel in the basket on the front of my bike, I need to twist it and disassemble it. But it looked like there was dirt in the joints. No matter how hard I pushed, it didn't want to come apart. After a strenuous effort, I realized I couldn't get it apart, so I decided to hold it in one hand and ride my bike with the other. With the downpour soaking me through, and a shovel in one hand, and riding one-handed, it was as if I'd returned to that night. What the? Okay. No, return was the wrong word. It was more like that night had never ended. The pain of the raindrops striking me were no different from then. The thing that was different was Hinamizawa, the world, and nothing else. The rain clouds were already making it dark, and now it was about time for the sun to set. I could tell it would only get rapidly darker. The straight road leading to town, in the middle of it. That should be where I buried it. Yes. It was near that streetlight. On that night, too, the water from the downpour was splashing down from the streetlight's overhang like a waterfall. The pouring rain was exactly the same as it had been that night, and thus it brought my memories into focus. I left my bike in the brush and stepped into the forest, the ground already soaked with mud. Where had I buried him? Think. The darkness. The shadows, the water, the mud, everything was the same. Tink! And then I spotted the lantern by a fallen, moss-covered tree. That's right, I left it right there. If I left the lantern here, then I would have buried him over here. With the sensation of standing in the sludge, my feet remembered the spot better than my eyes did. I plunged my shovel into the ground. It's hard. It wasn't here. I just dug it up, so it should have been softer. I stick my shovel down in a few spots, to test what they feel like. One of them, queerly felt deeper. I recalled where the lantern was, where the trees and things were in relation to each other, and knew that it had to be here. Under here slept that man's corpse. There would definitely be the tattoo of a tiger on his back. But if it wasn't there, then I had made a horrible mistake and killed someone completely unrelated instead. I'd be more dazed at the fact that Satoko's uncle wasn't dead than I would regret having gotten someone else mixed up in this. If this insane world was punishment for the sin of committing murder, I wouldn't be able to accept it until I'd killed Satoko's uncle for good. And then, without any fear, I'd attack him again. And that time, I would kill him for sure. But what if the tattoo was there? That would mean I'd killed Satoko's uncle. But that would be terribly strange. If I'd killed him for sure, then who was the uncle at Satoko's house this very moment? Impossible. I didn't even know anymore what I was using the word impossible to refer to. I've used the word quite a few times today. If I had to make the words impossible fit just one thing, what would it be? That much was obvious to me. It would be impossible for this crazy world to be real! I shouted, then turned behind me. There was nobody there, of course. It hadn't been bothering me for a while, but those footsteps had followed me this entire day. Even just now, an extra set of footsteps had splashed behind me. No one was actually there, no indications of anyone even, but they were there. Who are you? You've been following me ever since I came to this world. That's right. Thinking back, the first time I heard those footsteps was after Takano-san and I had parted. Those footsteps were my welcome into this strange, inside-out world. No one could be there. I'd get no response. Whoever it was, they just kept staring at me. It wasn't ominous, just unpleasant. After staring into empty space for a bit, as I bathed in the rain, my illogical anger slipped away. My tension loosened, and a tired feeling reared its head. I tasted this feeling that night, too. The sudden exhaustion I felt as the tension in my brain loosened. My vision quickly narrowed, and I felt like everything around me had suddenly gotten darker. I couldn't give in to the sensation. 
I would light what little explosives were left in my brain and force myself to keep going. I needed to dig that man up before my stamina ran out. I needed to see the tattoo on his back. I caught my suddenly ragged breath and calmed down. Then I stuck the shovel into the soft, muddy ground again. It felt exactly the same as that night. The sensation of digging a hole in the beach with water coming into it with every wave. What day was today? Had I gone back to the night of Watanagashi? Every strange thought that came to mind tormented me. Given my exhaustion, I didn't think I could manage to hold those thoughts back. Once the hole was deep, all illumination finally faded, blanketing my vision in jet black. It was probably the moment the sun had fully set too. That night, I had feared the worst, and gone without using much light. My senses were so strained that I could see even in that darkness. But now, I didn't have that kind of strength left. I drained everything I had last night, and now the darkness would be lethal. I decided to turn on the lantern. Putting it on the first setting would make it give off a faint light. Even with how little there was, it was enough, and people wouldn't be able to see it from far away in this rain. I grabbed the chilled lantern, turned the dial with a click, set it to the weakest light setting, and turned it on. An uncanny world of silhouettes appeared before me. A complex and strange shadowy world, created by the intricate entanglement of the trees and branches. I had only turned on a light, and it was like that was all it took to make the world into something else. I let out a quick, tired breath and wiped the fluid neither rain nor sweat from my brow. Then I raised the shovel into the air and slammed it into the mud. That moment. The silhouettes surrounding me, ominously all moved at once. Uh... Inside my head, something panicked in there. Something coarse, but not hot or cold, was loudly rushing about. The silhouettes were all around me, looking down at me. And one of them, a silhouette bigger than the others, stepped forward. <laughs> hey there! <laughs> What's up, Oishi? <laughs> I was gonna joke saying it'd be him, but never mind. Oishi, let's go! <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> the moon sure is beautiful tonight. The coarseness in my brain shot through my whole spine and left me at my waist. The strength in my body all left me through my hips, and I crouched down with a splash into the sea of mud I dug myself. You know, every time I hear this frickin' SNES title screen music, it sounds a bit more ominous. Oh, oh is she? Is that really how you address your elders? You'll have a rough time of it once you become an adult. Foo foo foo. It wasn't only Oishi, but five or six of them in a row. Men wearing raincoats. I had no inkling that this many people had gotten so close. It was like, once I turned on the lantern, they just appeared there, sliding out of the shadows. Please don't mind us. Just think of us as trees in the forest, perhaps? Don't mind them? Yes. Pay no attention to us. Please, continue digging your hole. Uh... <laughs> it's very late and raining very hard. And you're working very pretty fervently. We won't get in your way. Please, dig to your heart's content. <laughs> no thank you, I said. When I tried to get up and turn around, two men blocked that route. They stood on either side of me and lifted me up with amazing strength, then threw me into the sea of mud. As I soaked in the mud bath I dug for myself, I looked up at the silhouettes looking down at me. Oishi squatted, picked up my shovel, and threw it at my feet for me. It bounced loudly off the mud and hit me in the face. Okay, that's convenient. Come! Please, continue. Continue. I couldn't bear the oppressiveness of the silhouettes surrounding me, and slowly I stuck the shovel into the mud again. It felt like I was digging my own grave. If I kept digging, it wouldn't matter whether there was a tattoo or not, because that man's corpse would appear eventually. It was all over. Surrounded on all sides, and nowhere to go. But I just couldn't figure it out, no matter how much I thought about it. Why 
I, what do they hear? Was it Takano-san? There was only one person who could have made the connection between me and this place. Shit, I knew it. She deserved to die! Stopping so soon? Ah! Bam. Oishi kicked me in the back, which took me by surprise, sending me flying into the mud. Hurry up and dig, please. You really should consider the fact that some of us are standing out here in the rain. Fuck you. If you don't like the rain, then just go home! Ah! I wish he kicked some mud into my face. Use your hands, please, not your mouth. Only stage actors do both at once. Isn't that right, boys? The men around him didn't react, not knowing whether they should laugh. But when Oishi glared at them, they started mumbling out pain chuckles. Just who? Who was this guy? I knew the world had changed after that night. But if I went even further back, didn't it start when this guy showed up? That was when our peaceful days had been taken from us. Ever since he showed up in Hinamizawa, things had been odd. Everyone stopped smiling and the world went crazy. <sighs> the ground under my feet gradually got harder and heavier. At this point, even I started to think something was odd. I hadn't buried him this deep on that night, had I? My exhaustion peaked, and I sat down on the spot. How long do you want me to dig? Kids these days have no stamina. Hey, you! At Oishi's gesture, the men all pulled out their own sinister-looking shovels. God damn, you're making this feel like a cult. Well, they are police, to be fair. As I watched the daze, one of them grabbed my collar, dragged me out of the hole, and threw me to the ground. The rest of the men stepped into the hole I dug and started shoveling themselves. As I stared at them, dumbfounded, Oishi sauntered over and squatted down to look at me directly. Keiichi Maibara-san. Is this a hobby of yours? Digging holes on rainy nights? When I didn't respond, Oishi took one of the tin buckets they were using to bail out the muddy water, scooped up some of it, and splashed the whole thing in my face. Okay. <coughs> the rain's heavy today, too. No matter how wet I get, I still don't understand the appeal. Oishi smiled to himself, then scooped up another bucket full of muddy water. I'll ask you again. Is digging holes on rainy nights your hobby? Who the hell would have a hobby like that? Splash! Oishi hit me with another bucket full of muddy water. The pebbles in it stung. Will there be something in that hole? I've always liked that story, you know? About the old man who could make plants bloom and the puppy digging in his yard for gold. As he spoke, he ran the bucket through the muddy water again, to splash it in my face again. What kind of treasure is buried down there, hmm? Can you at least give me a hint? <laughs> if you want to know, then dig on your own time. You fucking pig! I wasn't saying that out loud, but Oishi mercilessly drenched me in muddy water again anyway. Shit, shit, shit! If only, if only you hadn't shown up, the world wouldn't have gone wrong! Ever since you showed up, things have been strange. Satoko got abused by her uncle, I ended up killing him, and the world went crazy. He was how it all began, because of this culprit. He splashed another bucket of mud in my face. My insides were seething with anger. Die. Shu. Shu die too! If I have some strange power to kill someone by cursing them, like with Takano-san, then you're dead! And it won't be Oyashiro-sama's curse. It'll be mine. I'll curse you and kill you! What a rebellious look you're wearing. Why don't we use this opportunity to teach you a thing or two in that regard? We really do live in peace these days. When I was about your age, corporal punishment was the norm for everything. Oishi-san. One of the digging men in raincoats wiped some sweat off and called Oishi over. Oishi tossed the bucket away, then turned around with an evil grin on his face. Yes, what is it? Please, look at this. Acceptance, or maybe resignation. I wanted to say to them, 
So you blockheads finally found us. Yeah, that's right. I'm the one who killed him. But you're the police. So it's your own job to figure out who he is, right? Come on. Prove to me that he's really Satoko's uncle. What on earth? We think it's an old drain pipe. It seems to be connected to the irrigation channel over there. Let's smash the thing! It's not being used, is it? The men all exchanged glances and hesitantly broached another topic. Oh, she san The ground down there is pretty hard. I don't think anything could be deeper than this. Did we get the location wrong? No, at first, it definitely felt like the place had been dug up before. But after digging so far, the ground suddenly hardened. I think we've gone down further than the hole that was originally dug. So, what does that mean? There was a hole here, and someone filled it back up? Is that what you're trying to tell me? What? What were they talking about? <laughs> well, well, I'm at a loss. Aren't you, my Ibarra-san? Oishi grabbed my collar and dragged me to the huge hole they dug. The mud inside was like an ocean, and I couldn't see any drain pipe down there. One of the men stirred it with a shovel, letting me hear it clang against something hard. There was no doubt I'd buried him right here, but I hadn't buried him this deep. I didn't dig deep enough to unearth an entire drain pipe. So, then, this man, his corpse, where was it? Proof, proof that I'd been successful on that night, was gone. 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 Then what? What on earth was I? Was I actually crazy after all? And just possessed by the delusion that I'd killed someone? That couldn't be. It was the unmistakable truth. It couldn't have been a hallucination. But now, the most important evidence that it hadn't been an illusion was gone. I killed him. I buried him. I had absolute unwavering confidence in that fact. Then, did I fail to kill him? After I left here, had he started breathing again, crawled out, and gone back to Satoko's house? Was that it? I had come here to see whether he had a tattoo or not. And yet the truth I unearthed was far more than that. I... yesterday, what was I... I killed him. I buried him! There was no doubt! But for some reason, he lived and crawled back out! And that... It's impossible too. Ugh. I'm so tired of hearing the word impossible over and over. I get it. I get it! Dead people don't like to play by the rules here in Hinamizawa. Then, I'll kill you as many times as I need to. I'll keep killing you until you never show your face to Satoko again! Oishi and the others were muttering to each other. Eventually, their conversation ended and Oishi came towards me. What did he want to say? What did he want to do? I stiffened, tensing up, and then Oishi just ignored me like I wasn't even there and passed right by me. The other men too, they ignored me and shuffled away. Eventually, there was no longer a sign that anyone was around, and I returned to my quiet world of silhouettes. The only one left there was me. Only the sound of the pouring rain filled up the silence. And boom. Yep. Okay, I think I potentially know what happened there. Uh. <clears throat> potentially. Oh, tips! Inquiry request and record of malice. Alright. Achievement unlocked, gone. Hmm. Alright, inquiry request. It's a phone call. Or something. Okinomiya Police Station Command Center Transmission Recording. June 20th, 8.08 p.m. <clears throat> this is Okinomiya Police Station. We read you loud and clear. Hello, we'd like you to look up a license plate for us. Shishibone H4344. Shishibone H4344. All right. Please give us just a moment to look it up. Thank you. That was the wrong voice. Number match. Shishibone H4344. Owner, digga 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 digga. Address, ba da ba da ba da. Hinamizawa Village, Shishibone. Village make and mod, vehicle make and model, ba ba da ba da. Theft reports, none. 
Special mentions, nothing of note. Opening me up security police to Oishi. We found the license plate from earlier. Oishi, do you read? Oishi, please respond. Hmm? Am I getting a bad signal? Anyone in Oishi's car, please re- uh, Nothing, eh? Uh, oh, this is a different dude. Oishi's on one of the license plate check. Whose car was it? Someone from the village. A completely average car. Who was it? If Oishi-san was asking, then it can't be anyone good, right? The special mentions column is completely blank. No indications related to the S-group either. And no demerits on it. <laughs> Maybe I passed him on the road and he got mad. That guy isn't the type to forget a grudge. He's not responding. Weird. Record of malice is just blank. <laughs> he said it smelled. He said the food smelled. He said it smelled because I smelled. He said I smelled because I don't take baths. He said to take a bath three times a day because I was a smelly person. Oh. Oh. Okay. I, I think I know what this is. This is Satoko talking, probably. He said I had to stay in the bath for a long time every time. He must be possessed by something, too. This is the same thing the man who died said. Oh, wait, maybe not. Why does he know what that man said before? That much is obvious. The same thing that possessed that man is now possessing him. Can't a sudden earthquake make a big hole in front of the house? If it did, he would definitely go and look into it. And then I'd just have to push him in. I won't give in until I get that chance. I won't give in. I won't cry. I won't give in. I won't cry. <sighs> Someone is apologizing again. No, maybe that was Satoko. That was a short fucking tip, though. Jeez. Continue. We still don't have the frickin' achievement for completing all the tips. So that means there's still more. So that's weird. Huh. Well, either way, this is going to be where I end this episode. Maybe next episode I'll be able to finish off this chapter, according to the comment, which binging it, I'm guessing, means there's about three-ish hours. Like, two to four, probably. So, yeah. Either way, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. If you liked it, then be sure to press the like button. And if you didn't like it, then fuck you too. Remember to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all my videos and stuff. And as always, my name is Godzi, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye! Yeah.